Hello everyone, this is Tactical H and today we are here for a Total Warhammer 2 online multiplayer replay sent in by Stride Games who is playing as the Vampire Count against Zarix who is playing as the Wood Elves and you can see here the Wood Elves is bringing a skirmishing plate here, a kite bill with a bunch of Weight Watchers in the front backed up by some Wild Riders. At the very far back we have a line of Eternal Gods protecting a Spellsinger of Life who has Awakening of the Wood and Earth Blood. In this guise we have a Glade Lord with Arrows of Kernus, the usual Breath attacked and also Prey of Anath Rayma. Now despite the strong skirmishing potential, I don't think it's the best build of the Wood Elves because it is hard for them to perform well if your opponent knows what they're doing. I'm not saying the build is bad, but it is extremely predictable. Wood Elves are known for their skirmishing play and their enemies would be prepared to deal with it. Just like here, Stride Games bring a shit ton of chaff infantry that you can't really gain any value shooting them with the Waywatcher's expensive ammo. And at the back, we have a whole bunch of Black Knights and Dire Wolf spams. None of these are good targets for the Waywatchers either with the 30% block chance on these Black Knights with their shields. They will just mitigate most of their Waywatcher fire and also they're not exactly expensive enough for those ammo to earn back the value with only 750 gold costs on every single Black Knight. And in contrast, these Black Knights and Direwolf spams are really effective in dealing with the Wood Elf skirmishing play. With the heavy armor, they can counteract the Wild Riders who doesn't have the best armor piercing damage. And their mobility means that the Weight Watchers will be constantly pressured by the numbers and the speed and will not have a safe environment for firing, even with the um, Eternal Gods pushing up because there's a lot of chaff units that can pin down the Wood Elf infantry line and allow the um, Dire Wolves and Black Knights to circle around and run them down. And yeah, that's basically for the army builds for both sides. We have the Heinrich Kemmler leading the Vampire Army with a bunch of vampiric spells and also not exactly a good target to shoot at with the Cloak of Mist and Shadows providing that 60% physical resistance. So yeah, that's basically it for the army builds. Now let's get the battle started as we use this example to see why the Wood Elves should do last skirmishing and kiting plays. Personally, I've stopped making kite builds for Wood Elves because it is rather ineffective when your opponent knows what they're doing. Because the Wood Elf skirmish play is so strong, an opponent of Wood Elves always built their army to counter it, just like here, all these mobility here. Absorbing the ammo from the Weight Watchers, sure, it seems that the Black Knights are taking massive damage from the firepower, but remember they can heal back up with Invocation of the Hex, and the um, firepower of the Weight Watchers are not exactly doing the damage they need to win the game. You can see here, they need two volleys to take off two-thirds of the health of a Black Knight unit, and there are, what, eight units of Black Knights on the field? So that means in total they need at least 24 volleys to demolish all these Black Knight units. But then there's also the Dire Wolves and all the zombies around ready to pressure them and run them down. And on top of that with the healing, the White Watchers simply do not have enough ammo to finish off the Black Knight. And with the speed of all these mobility pushing forward, the White Watchers are already in a rather dangerous situation as the mobility of the vampires are closing in, even hitting some of the Way Watchers as the um, Wild Riders are plunging themselves into combat hoping to pin down all these Black Knights. But with the Lances and Barding Black Knights with all the high charge bonus and then some rear charges from the Black Knights, from more Black Knights and Dire Wolves, the um, Wild Riders rather fragile armor, only 40 relying on that physical resistance simply isn't enough to pin in all these mobility from the vampire count. And with that, some of these black knights and direwolves were able to slip through the gaps of the infantry while the rest of the black knights are just forced pathing through, running down the way watchers, taking away their already scarce ammo. Well, in the front line, there's just not enough infantry to pin in all the spears and black knights. Because of how wide the Vampire Count army is, it is basically a 20 unit full stack while the um, Glade Lord is just busy plunging herself into combat trying to snipe out Heinrich Kemmler. But Kemmler is not exactly the f most fragile lord in the Vampire roster. He dropped in a Krell Summon taking massive chunks of health away from the Glade Lord 
And then Kamler simply recovers his HP through a bunch of passive regeneration, including the Master of the Dead, as well as the Chaos Tomb Blade that activates when he engages in melee, combining into a maximum 12 HP per second healing. As a result, Kamler was able to quickly recover from the Glade Lord's sniping attempt. On the other hand, the Wood Elves' kiting attempt with their Way Watchers is pretty much in shambles, with all the Dark Wolves keep on running down all the Weight Watchers while the Wild Riders desperately trying to pin in the Black Knights but they are simply unable to do so, being charged by all these numerically superior enemies. They are taking massive damage and are routed. Same goes for the Weight Watchers who cannot outrun the four legs on the Dire Wolves and the Black Knights and they are basically routed and shattered alongside the Wild Riders. At the same time, the Glade Lord who routed back into the skies recovered and tries to turn the table with an arrow of Kurnos. Ignoring that massive physical resistance from the Cloak of Mist and Shadows, some eternal gods trying to put up a last end, being surrounded by skeleton spears and zombies, they are occupied by these cheap chaff unable to come to their aid of their Waywatcher brothers. So at this point, the Spellsinger being pinned down, the um, Eternal Gods are scattered around the battlefield hoping to uh, fan off the tide of the zombies. Kemler is still being sniped by the Glade Lord, down to the last bit of HP. However, a massive undead resurgent and invocation of the hack combo increased the survivability of all these units, while the Glade Lord being stuck on the ground in this melee blob has taken some serious damage from Krell being forced off, retreating yet again. With the Way Watchers eliminated, these Black Knights and Dire Wolves are able to just circle around the battlefield, slamming straight into the backs of all these Eternal Gods, a massive surround on all these last of the Wood Elf infantry, balance of power is in the favor of Vampire Count, and we can basically conclude that the Wood Elves simply do not have the um, tools to come back from this fight. Breath attacks are being dropped onto the Black Knights, but they are on the move. The um, accuracy of the breath was not exactly the greatest. The Vampire Counts, expecting the predictable kite play, brought in exactly what they need to shut it down. And with that, the victory goes to the dead. This battle is a great example of why I never bring any more foot skirmishers as the Wood Elves. As you can see here, despite Way Watchers are really strong in their firepower, they're so easily predicted and countered with a simple spam of cheap mobility. Any opponents of Wood Elves simply expect Way Watchers to be on the field and they will make preparations to counter them. Just like here, between Strat Games and Starix, both are great players, but the Strat Games army build got a massive lead in the end, with the Way Watchers only barely earning back their own value. While the Dire Wolves, despite being one of the cheapest mobility in the game, they earn back way above two times their value. They are just happily munching on the Way Watchers and other Wood Elf mobility, while the Black Knights, who have their shields and armor, absorbing all the shots. Yes, they are destroyed by all those Way Watcher fire, but that's more than enough for them to earn back their value because Way Watchers, the ammo, counts into their expensive balance of power as well. So units are actually getting some value just from absorbing the ammo. And with the Way Watchers shut down, the mobility the Wild Riders counteracted by all these heavily armored Black Knights. And then we have the Glade Lord shut down by a brilliant Krell summon. Sure, she did a lot of damage to Kamler, but remember Kamler has a lot of healing, almost reaching his healing cap throughout the game with those invocations, the passive healing from the Chaos Tomb Blade and the Master of the Dead. Kamler didn't do a lot of damage, but he himself was just tanking all the burst damage from the breath attacks from the shots and the melee attacks from the Glade Lord. And with that, the Eternal Gods were not really able to perform well, being tangled up by all these zombies and skeleton spears. They were not fighting what they wanted to fight, which is the Black Knights. And even so, with the Black Knights slamming into their rear, the rear charge penalty is just way too much for them. Now, despite me saying that Way Watchers are easily predictable and counted, this is actually one thing you can utilize to earn yourself a little bit more advantage. Now, your opponent will be spamming mobility like how Strat Games do right here with the Black Knights and Dire Wolves. They expect a kiting play and they prepare for a kiting play, but what if you bring a melee-centric army to just screw with their predictions? And now their army build is caught off guard as they are not ready to face the wrath of a full Wood Elf melee build. 
For example, having a front line of dryads to clear out all these zombies and skeleton spears and add in an ancient tree man as lord and also an extra tree man, a regular unit, as two anchor points on your infantry line. Then having an extra line of eternal gods guarding the rear preventing rear charges from the black knights, this vampire build will have a harder time dealing with the melee rush of the wood elves. Now of course that's just an idea I haven't really tested out since I rarely use wood elves to play against the vampire counts. If you have other army builds that you recommend feel free to leave them in the comment section and let me know. And yeah, that's basically it for today. Big thanks to Strat Games for sending in this replay, and of course, Zarex for playing against Strat Games and giving us such a good replay. And viewers, thank you for watching. If you have any replays that you want to showcase, feel free to drop by my Discord or send me an email with the replay file attached, and I'll be sure to check them out. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe to keep an eye out on any new video uploads. They will be covering battle replays like this one, wild army builds, occasionally memes and shitpost videos and also tips and strategies for Total Warhammer multiplayer. And yeah, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Back to Glitch, signing out.